past, we know that during the pandemic, some of those people who had entered the middle class, who had jobs, have now lost their jobs. Do you think the average consumer could confidently afford to buy an electric vehicle today? One thing is correct that we are facing the problem of because this pandemic, the COVID-19. But today, India, 100% by considering all this problem, I am confident that we are still successful making road construction. We are the highest in the world to make 37 kilometer per day national highway. Though there was a COVID problem was there. I am confident that there are problems. We are facing very crucial problem because of COVID-19. Now the vaccine is going on. I am confident that we will win over that problem. And today India is becoming the largest EV market for electric two-wheelers, three-wheelers and cars. The most important strength with India is there is a huge domestic market potential available in India. Lots of incentive, tax exemption, loan facilities, subsidies are making EV affordable to purchase. Over a life cycle period, EV should bring more saving compared to the petrol diesel vehicle. Many municipal corporations and state transport networking are procuring and operating e-buses for their intercity and intra-city fleets. It would become a viable option. Lots of companies are making electric trucks, electric bicycles, e-bikes are gaining popular. E-bikes are also becoming popular. I have just launched one e-bike in Ludhiana from Hero Industries. It's a very beautiful bike and they are planning to export e-cycle to all the world. It's a quality is good. The research they are doing in Germany and UK and that buy the e-bicycle is very good. So 100% that is also the important market for all of us. And Hero is doing excellent job on that line. E-commerce business deliver taxis, small carts, goods vehicles, forest vehicles are shifting to electric. I'm already giving the example of Amazon. Amazon India started their e-deliveries fleet through electric vehicles. Recently, I have launched the first ever agriculture tractor run on bio CNG and soon I am launching a tractor run on 100% electricity. We are also insisting industry to develop construction equipment operating on electric. In the next two to three years, mass production of EVs will lead to the same capital cost in comparison to petrol and diesel versions today due to economics of scale. 100% I am confident that we will make it complete that target. No doubt, the indigenous battery technology, localization of EV components and huge domestic demand would further make EV the most affordable means of transport in coming years. And I am confident that India will be the successful example to, for the world as far as the e-vehicle is concerned. Of the electric vehicle supply chain, you think that India can have the largest uh, market share of? Is it the whole vehicle or, or parts of vehicles as well? The government is supporting domestic manufacturing and encouraging localization of all EV parts. Now the battery in EV is the most important component which shares 50% cost of an e-vehicle. I had recently chaired a meeting to push research and development efforts towards alternative battery technology for electric vehicles such as metal ion, metal air, at the same time zinc ion, aluminum ion and steel ion also. We are making lot of experiments and now our research is on the final stage where I am confident that we will get good results from that. The research and academic institution in India are working hard for the development of indigenous and low-cost battery technology for electric vehicles. We can generate 81% value of lithium-ion battery in India. Further, I am pursuing research for its substitute, such as aluminum-ion, zinc-ion, sodium-ion batteries. Simultaneously, we are aggressively pursuing research on green hydrogen as a transport fuel. The Chennai IIT is doing a lot of experiments. The research performed by IIT Madras, that is Chennai on hydrogen fuel cell, is very interesting, where they are trying to generate energy from sea-based salt water and solar power. So I am very much confident that on that line we are working because that is the need of the country. And this futuristic development is very, very important as far as our ecology, environment and economy is concerned. And government is insisting on it. Quite often use an electric vehicle yourself, and I have one. And one of the things that's the hardest, even in London, uh, is to find a place to charge it. So tell me what steps you're taking in India to address this issue around charging infrastructure. There are no benefits in the development of the EV ecosystem based on coal-based energy sources. The government is promoting two important measures to manage the EV charging load. The first measure promotes to use of renewable energy 
to charge electric we are using solar power we are our solar power generation is very huge lot of thousands of projects are now we are encouraging people for making solar energy and idea is using solar energy for charging of e vehicle the first major promote the use of renewable energy to charge electric vehicles which will reduce the load on transmission and distribution network faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid electric vehicles fame 2 links renewable energy sources with electric vehicle charging infrastructure the second major includes introducing the time of day charge for ev charging and we have abundant solar energy solar generator electricity charges we are very low and ensure a zero carbon emission cycle government has permitted to set up ev charging points across 69000 petrol stations in the country for charging infrastructure domestic charging and less lease models for evs are becoming a popular option domestic charging facility at malls parking lots commercial places at homes are making evs more adoptable suresh bhat sabagro in nagpur in my constituency we have 1100 car parking and where we are already making the facility for ev charging ev makers are providing different charging technology for changing like charging box battery swapping facility and some of them are establishing own network of commercial charging stations we are working on alternative charging option through utilizing the existing electrification infrastructure at metros railways solar parks etc and we are giving highest priority for that that we want to use solar energy for e vehicles charging infrastructure into clean grids is that a consideration for india at this point actually we want to use solar energy for that we have lot of projects where we are encouraging the entrepreneurs for making solar energy and that solar energy we want to use for e vehicle because the carbon emission is zero and that is exactly important for the country that we don't want to use electric power particularly the thermal power that will not be appropriate in some part of the country particularly the hill area like uttarakhand himachal pradesh kashmir arunachal and northeast of area the hydro power is available which is very cheaper so where there we can use hydro power for e charging and at the same time the wind power is also available in the part of the country where we want to we are making now hybrid project on solar and wind and we want to use green power priority wise for e vehicle we have got the already lot of projects on coal but we are not going to encourage the coal power because that is going to create pollution especially green approach is concerned we need green power and to encourage and generate more green power and using of that power for e vehicle is ultimately our mission and that is exactly the policy of the government challenge of lithium supply and we know that china has a large majority of this of the world's lithium supply so i wonder if you could talk a little further about that and what any alleviating factors might be i am telling you very frankly and fairly i don't want to compare our policies our incentives our development with the other countries but i am sure that the way in which our research organizations are working i am confident we will become number 1 in the world and our technology are very very cheaper now we are making 86% of the lithium ion battery in india i recently chaired a meeting to push research and development efforts towards alternative battery technologies for electric vehicles such as metal ion metal air etc our research on academic institution isro drdo iits are working hard for development of indigenous and low cost battery technology for electric vehicles and 100% our startup young talented engineers they are making lot of experiments in due course of time we will have a solution our iit chennai madras is working on hydrogen fuel cell and they are making hydrogen from sea water by using solar power so lot of the initiative has taken government is very supportive we are a facilitator we are supporting all of this new research and in due course of time it is my confidence and it is my challenge that we will make india number 1 in the world as far as this alternative technologies are concerned related with the e vehicles regarding the battery chemistry also our iit is isro all people are doing excellent jobs 100% i am confident due course of time within a year we will offer a lot of good solutions and good affordable technology to the whole world and my dream is to make india as number one manufacturing hub automobile hub in the country in the world presently we have all reputed brand in the world mercedes bmw all are present in india and 100% indian manufacturing company also doing excellent job because this is the futuristic policy of the government and because of atmanirbhar bharat our policy is to reduce our import and that is because of the, the at the same time we need to save our country from the pollution because of the import of petroleum products we are facing the problem of pollution so the import substitute cost effective pollution free 
and making India, make in India, made in India, indigenous technology. I am confident that 100% we will offer our technology and solution to the whole world. And if anywhere there is appropriate technology, our industry is ready to make a joint venture with them and also ready to accept that technology for investment and for technology. Our doors are open. You are all welcome to enter in India for making new collaboration and giving new technology. We are ready for that. So tell me, first of all, what is India's current strategy on electric mobility? Actually, India is importing the petroleum products more than we are spending 8 lakh crores for that. And actually, because of that, the air pollution is a big crucial problem in the country. So now our policy is import substitute cost effective pollution free and preferably our size of automobile industry is 6 lakh 50 thousand. And we want to make India as a manufacturing hub, number one hub of electric car, electric buses, electric by electric tubers, electric auto rickshaw, and even going for electric truck. On the line, we are making a lot of experiments, making research. Many organizations are doing a lot of work on it on that line, and now we are successfully started manufacturing e-vehicles. So 100 percent government is encouraging this is 48 percent, and here it is comes to 5 percent. So naturally, a lot of support from the government side. And now my ministry has taken a decision for the scrapping policy. The vehicles, those who have completed 15 years, we are now making mandatory to scrap them. Because of that, the raw material can be easily available and we can reduce the production cost. The technology is available, the particularly the vendors and uh, ancillary industries are already there. We have already started research on zinc iron, aluminum iron, and steel iron and we are also working on the line for making of hydrogen fuel cell that is also a priority sector for all of us and electric vehicle we are as far as the lithium ion battery is concerned we don't have lithium but now 86 percent of the battery we are already successfully make in india is successfully we are doing so on the basis of that we are encouraging and i'm confident that we'll get good support from the manufacturers, the MSME as a minister of micro, small and medium industries. We are very keenly interested to support them and encourage them for completing the, our future related with the e-vehicle. That is the dream of Atmanirbar Bharat of our Prime Minister on that line. We are supporting them and 100% I am confident that we will get good results. Actually, because of the pollution, we are facing a lot of crucial problems related with the health. The diesel and petrol is really a problematic situation. And presently, we are already committed as far as the United Kingdom is a strategic partner for India on climate change and sustainability. Uh, we strongly believe that society should be livable, workable and sustainable for all with an import focus on ethics, ecology and environment. And as far as India is also committed and progressing positively as per Paris Climate Agreement. And that is very important where efforts are centered to reduce carbon emission by 33 to 35 percent by 2030. On that line, this e-vehicle policy is very, very important. The United Kingdom is also working hard to reduce its carbon emission to net zero by 2050. We are also working on the same line and the import uh, the air pollution, water pollution and sound pollution. These are the three crucial problems as far as our commitment for ecology and environment regarding air pollution. We are facing a lot of health problems. So we have a highest priority that how we can protect the health of the common man and giving a sustainable life to them. So on that line, we are very much punctual and very much assertive and at the same time, we want to take the make it as early as possible that is to be import substitute cost effective pollution free and we want to develop indian technology innovation here in india as far as the e vehicles are concerned let's talk about some of the policies that you've implemented there's a an fame uh, 2 policy which really helps to uh, get faster adoption among the two and three wheelers and that's a different approach than what you've taken out taken for the subsidies for four-wheel passenger vehicles. So tell me a little bit about that and shed a little light on, on why you've taken that approach. We have a huge domestic demand for two-wheelers as it is the most popular affordable means of personal transport. Presently, our two-wheeler industry, the Bajaj, TBS, and Hero, they are exporting their 
50 percent of the production to the world. So our two wheelers are very popular. The auto rickshaws play an important supplement in last mile connectivity in city areas. Our auto rickshaw also popular in the particular African countries. We are exporting lot of auto rickshaw there. Our rural transportation is dominated by auto rickshaw and two wheelers, where we can replace them by e vehicles through FEM2 scheme. The government is also offering a subsidy of rupees 32,000 for electric two wheelers and also rupees three lakh for electric cars and rupees 33 35 lakh for buses so we are constantly supporting the e vehicles and now the most important thing is as far as the fuel is concerned indian situation we are power surplus and compare rate of the diesel petrol and gas lng cng as compared with electricity it is very negligible it is import substitute cost effective pollution free and from maintenance point of view it is also very cheaper there is no maintenance in e vehicle so 100 percent i'm giving the example on the mumbai the best is the bus service company where diesel bus they get uh, the average expenditure for diesel bus is 115 rupees per kilometer and for electric air condition bus the expenditure is 50 rupees per kilometer so 100 percent it is economically viable and that is the most important reason that people are taking the advantage of it recently the delhi government incentivized ev by offering an additional subsidy of rupees 30,000 for e two wheeler and up to 1.5 lakh for electric car the total number of electric two wheelers in india are about 3 lakhs and the number are increasing rapidly. This can be easily charged at home and they have a very low operational and maintenance cost. OEMs in India such as TVS, Bajaj and Hero Motor Corporation are exporting 50% of their two-wheeler production with huge domestic demand and adoption. The ecosystem for small electric vehicles is very well developed in India. Now the battery capacity, driving range and charging mechanism of electric cars are significantly improving. Our Indian company Tata Nexon EV become the largest selling electric car in the country. Global giants such as Tesla and Triton EV are soon expected to enter in the Indian market, electric vehicle market, and more and more such EV makers would make the price competitive. After the successful rollout of the vehicle strapping policy, I am sure that the more people would prefer to buy efficient electric cars. And the government is thinking to give significant incentives to EV buyers who scrap their old IC engine cars. Above all, we are very much concerned about the environment and whatever is good for it, we are ready to adopt on priority because in the, it is in the interest of the nation in interest of the society and where the pollution is the big concern as per the health problems are concerned 100 percent we are very much committed for that Nitin Gadkari uh, thank you so much for being here with us on India Global Forum